So welcome uh, to our little security session. And uh, yeah, let me shortly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Knut Treffel. I'm senior product manager at SUSE, and uh, I got several responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is product security, and uh, the other one is what we call special deals. That's normally regularly everything which is out of the box and valuable enough to put someone like me on it. <laughs> so and then I'll make sure that um, it's aligned with our strategy and um, it fits in our portfolio and at the end that the customer is satisfied. So that's hopefully you in the future or in the present. So today uh, we're going to talk about security. And I started with SUSE uh, last year in May. And my first thought was what my job's going to be like. And I had a lot of philosophical, philosophical um, thinkings about um, what it's going to be. And uh, security, I found it, is the core value proposition of our existence as SUSE. I think it's all started with that SUSE story, making Linux Enterprise ready, bringing the first enterprise grade Linux to the market. And what does enterprise grade mean? Enterprise grade mean, means secure at the end. Why? Well, at the end, um, any CEO from any enterprise is supposed to work on risk and to reduce risk and to ensure business continuity and at the end be profitable. But the bare minimum is be fighting risks. And security is about fighting risks. And so it's a little bit like an insurance. So probably I'm going to make you first a little bit anxious and then present you us as the hero. And um, why do I do so? Because it's true. We live in a pretty hostile world. Um, and uh, a lot of things can go wrong. Some people, uh, some things go wrong just because, like you see, technical default, uh, te technical difficulties. But also, there are some bad guys out there in the world trying to bring your systems down. And um, but it's more than that. So it might make sense that we take a short look and remember what is security about. Security is, of course, also about confid uh, confidentiality. If you're in business, you got secrets. And you don't want these secrets to be used by anybody hostile against you. Uh, another thing is integrity. You want to make sure that the data you have is the data you have, and not something else, faulty or whatever. Um, it needs to be available, which means in a world where business is simply relying on IT, it, IT needs to be there. Now, just imagine for a second, we would shut off power here. I would be standing in front of you, might be talking. But in today's world, your business gets more and more remote. So you're connected to a lot of other entities which makes your business run might be customers, might be officials, might be anything, might be suppliers. And in this world, it's absolutely necess a necessity that your IT is available. Of course, there are some other targets coming more and more a little bit relevant. That's authentic, uh, um, <laughs> sorry, authenticity, which means um, that the information is the information which was at the very beginning. And uh, it's, uh, and, and also uh, the legal situation gets more and more present um, um, as it's ne maybe necessary that you can prove that it's original. Um, also, uh, it is necessary to know where it's from. And something um, which 
maybe America has a little trouble with the European Iran, and it's on a military, which means in a digital world, your customers in Europe, for example, have now a right to be forgotten. And uh, also for you, it might be very important that faulty data is securely erased. So all these are uh, necessities um, which uh, influence um, the way you do IT in the world. And you have to make sure that your ID, IT is capable of providing all these security features. And um, I think we can help. But in the past, um, a couple of really high challenges have been coming up to anyone who's responsible in IT. And um, we call these situations high impact vulnerabilities, um, which were pretty much challenging and had different origins, uh, but uh, were highly uh, uh, visible and, of course, a real threat to business continuity. Uh, what are we doing to help you with high impact vulnerabilities? But what is it? I'm talking about things like hardware problems. You all remember Spectrum Meltdown. Um, some, but it's, it's also um, other situations which might come across and put um, your IT at a threat. And why is it so? Um, it's because humans make errors. So in a more and more complex world, it's less and less possible to make anything secure out of the box. So no matter how hard you test something, there might be something there which somebody could use uh, to, to exploit it and uh, to get hold of your data or shut down your business or whatever. And in this environment, um, security becomes uh, more and more a process, which means you are forced uh, somehow to watch the situation and be capable of reacting. But how do you do so? I mean, some of these threats in the past have been um, created by hardware vendors, which would hardly talk to you, no matter, no matter how big you are. So for example, um, one of those big chips that vendors was responsible for a couple of threats, um, or uh, was involved into that, wouldn't pick up the phone when anybody calls him. Why? Uh, because some of those situations might be already known, but if they disclose that information to you or to anybody else, they are increasing the risk that something happens. So they, uh, they need to um, keep the information secret until they have a solution. And this is in your highly interest, because if the information gets leaked before, yeah, the bad guys know that before you might have taken any action. And that's a situation which you don't like. And SUSE is in a lucky position to now be very long in the business and having very well connected to a lot of entities in the open source market, and especially also to the hardware vendors. And um, it is certain that we are on a very short list of companies hardware vendors talk to if there is a situation. And why is it so? The longer the list it is, the more unsecure the situation is. Because the more uh, people know about it, the harder it's control. Um, we call this um, process um, uh, confidential, uh, or um, it's called responsible disclosure in one point, or uh, coordinated uh, disclosure in another point. And this procedure just ensures that if a hardware vendor uh, gets information that is, or even the software vendor gets information that his software is unsecure, um, they go and reach out to partners and make sure that a selected group of small, a small and selected group of partners 
is aware of and help him to clear the situation before it gets public and so maybe known to the bad guys. This is very important and SUSE is one of those partners you can rely on because we, um, we have established um, these connections and it's, uh, I can tell you from personal experience, not easy um, to um, keep the information um, as secret as possible and also um, it's um, a real work to coordinate all participants in a way to solve uh, the problem you need. Um, so um, it's most of the times um, not a single job. So it's, it's not us and just the hardware vendor involved, it's another third parties. Um, but um, so far, um, in the past year, we had a lot of work, but we've, I think we've established a pretty much, uh, or pretty well working uh, procedure. Um, and then we're constantly evolving that procedure, um, which um, ensures that we take the information and work together with Intel, with others, um, uh, to provide solutions to security threats before they get public. Um, we also try to improve our communication towards the press, towards anyone else, so that you guys are informed about what to do and which stuff to take as soon as possible. We're also um, heading forward to um, yeah, uh, automize this process so that um, uh, it, it is getting more convenient to you, which means it saves cost. Uh, of course, it's also necessary to, to have some in-house uh, experts who can answer to that information. And um, uh, I'm pretty proud that our security experts, one of them here, <laughs> um, contribute very much uh, to the all-over security situation, even because we're an open, open company uh, with other Linux distributions out there. Um, we have established this management process and we're constantly developing this management process and taking, uh, we're in direct contact to partners and to um, define the interfaces between the companies in a way that the information flow is fast and reliable and doesn't leak, <laughs> of course. So um, we're pretty proud and to have been able to uh, present information more and more early and just in time um, when the coded and rated uh, release date is out there. So let me skip that. Um, another point is insecurity, another threat to you is the sheer number of security threats which is out there. Um, we provide um, a list of potential security threats on our homepage um, sorted by the CVE number and if you look on that homepage, you really get lost because it's hundreds and thousands of CVEs. But that's clearly displaying the situation you're in. All these threats yeah, are, uh, are influencing the way you compute. And what you need is a team of people to be able to deal with that situation. So if every com uh, company has its own security team talking to upstream, talking to uh, hardware vendors, talking to anybody else, that would be very expensive. So you profit by the situation that we have an experienced team and uh, well-established communication channels to upstream and to partners uh, in order to manage all these situations. Um, and uh, to give you an, an idea, um, per year, um, our team uh, evaluates 13,000 vulnerabilities. So that's pretty tough. <laughs> that's a lot of work. And of course, it needs to be done by experts. Couldn't be done by anybody. And uh, we are coordinating about 3,000 security issues. And uh, we release over 1,800 updates. So that's, that's, that's a number which really puts any IT department in real <laughs> hectic, I can tell you. 
And, uh, but we are a partner at your site and help you solve these problems. And we're optimizing and we're trying to make these things more easy for you. And uh, it's also very necessary we can prove that. Um, we're certified. Um, we even have this flow remediation process certified. So we can probably say that the BSI in Germany said that the way we treat with those things is at the actual uh, uh, well state of the art. And um, we're going to recertify and uh, we're constantly evolving in that process. Um, for each issue, we, pride, uh, we are proud to provide you uh, a couple of very important information. Um, we have a security rating. Um, we um, clearly point in each of these CDE sites um, to the effective products and packages. And uh, we also give you a prioritization so that you can um, yeah, coordinate and, and, and prioritize your part of the work. So um, here's the um, link to our homepage. And if you take a look on it, you will find it's really a mess. But you can clearly search about the CDE number, and then you find the appropriate information you need. Um, we claim to be secure, but how can we prove it? And how to prove is a very important problem. If your business gets affected, it might be that somebody of your customers has the idea that you, it's your fault. And they are trying to sue you and trying to get the cost back of you. And what do you do? Then you stand in front of the judge, and you have to explain to the judge what have you done to prevent the situation. And if you then just simply uh, try to explain to a judge who's not an IT expert what you've done and why that is uh, reasonable, uh, you might get in trouble because the judge doesn't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> And so um, there's a very easy way uh, to circumstant that that is stick to standards. And one of those, um, and there are uh, several standards out in the world uh, which have been uh, created by uh, state authorities. So if you can point to one of those standards, it's a little easier to explain this judge that you've done something because you can say, I have done every measurement according to these standards. And even more, I've been certified, I'm working with partners who are certified um, accordingly, which means that an authority like a BSI audits what you've done, and at the end, gets a stamp. <laughs> you get a stamp which, which says that this authority agrees that you've done everything reasonable. And this is a really good security issue. Because if something happens, you have done everything which is possible in the view of the judge yeah, to provide the situation, hopefully. <laughs> so what kind of security certifications are out there? Of course, first there's the common criteria. Common criteria is a security standard um, which has been established in two ways. One way is an international treaty, where a couple of countries define a security authority and um, agreed on some steps on how to prove our security and security measures. And the second thing is an international ISO standard. And this ISO standard is pretty much the same thing, but without the authority <laughs> chain uh, to prove it. This might be um, interesting for anybody of you who might be dealing uh, with countries who are referring to the standard, but are not part of the common criteria uh, treaty. And this might happen, uh, just to point it out. So um, then there is another standard which is pretty important, 
um, especially if you want to uh, sell your product to the states and um, to the uh, government in, in the states. That's FIPS 142. It's about crypto libraries and that the crypto libraries are um, at the current state uh, where um, of government officials in the United States um, mainly um, are allowed to use them. Another thing is STIC. STIC is um, a hardening procedure. It's uh, simply a list to work through of steps you have to take and um, reactions of your system you have to control, uh, which at the end ensures that your system is hardened enough um, to be used in the governmental sector of the United States. Uh, STIC is also used by a couple of others, or, or a couple of other authorities are uh, leaning onto that and also requiring that um, these, these, um, uh, these, these hardening uh, steps. Um, there is a, uh, there's an optimization of that, but there are still some authorities or some uh, institutions out there who are taking these steps manually. Um, another thing is uh, PCI DSS, and that's more for the uh, 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 and that's more for the financial sector. So, where does these um, uh, security certifications matter? In which areas? Um, this is an overview. Common criteria, for example, is very much in the governmental sector and uh, space sector and anything like that in healthcare. So, this is not complete. And it's uh, it, it doesn't uh, so you cannot really 100% rely on this graphic, but it gives you an idea um, which sectors are counting on which of those certifications. <coughs> when it comes to the most important, um, the common criteria, um, we're certified, and we have been certified by the BSI according to the EAL4 plus standard. Uh, which is the highest uh, grade of, stand, uh, of proving security you can do with a ready-made product. Um, but the situation from criteria has severely changed. Um, we have the situation that um, the American authority, the NIAP, and um, the European authorities, here represented by the uh, BSI in Germany, where most of the uh, certifications in Europe are done, um, that they simply do not um, agree on the methodology. That's, what, that's because the NIAP um, had some critical issues um, with the common criteria process. Why? Common criteria doesn't tell you what is secure. Common criteria is a standard which defines processes where you declare together with a consultant and also an auditor what is secure for your product. So you are creating your own security target. And this is, of course, <coughs> makes sense because a lot of products out there um, have uh, very specific um, uh, areas where you need to prove security and they might differ. And so one simple security checklist wouldn't meet all these situations. And, but on the other hand, if you have a security, or if you define what is secure for each product individually, it is hard for a customer to compare the situation. And therefore, the, uh, the NIAP have come up with the idea to standardize that a little more and give a clear description of what a general purpose operating system is been uh, testing for, tested for. And, um, but on the other hand, um, by doing so, um, they try to fit this other way into the existing, well, framework of common criteria, which means that you do not get the appropriate EAL level you need. You're stuck with EAL level one because everything um, for this security target from the NIAP has been predispositioned uh, pre by, uh, by the NIAP. 
So we have this situation uh, where American authorities now are looking directly for the um, American protection profile and European um, entities like governmental organizations might ask for a classical um, old protection profile defined uh, and also agreed between the NIAF and uh, 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 the BSI. Um, and the situation that an attempt of collaboration um, simply should, uh, didn't work out. So this is in the state um, frozen, I think, from uh, 2016. And uh, since then, the documents haven't changed. So we have a situation um, where both of these are um, the views of the governmental authorities on security. And our uh, decision is to do both. Why? Because we think, as SUSE, security is not a matter of national interest or ideas. Security is security, which means that the one who is owning the system should, guarantee, uh, should be under full control of the system and no one else. Okay, so, and I think we can clearly uh, point out to that. So we, uh, we have planned and scheduled so far uh, to do both. Uh, for SLEE 15. Um, so if you want to do business on both sides of the Atlantic, um, you're pretty much safe with SUSE. And um, so this is our security certification roadmap. Um, so far we, we plan to do a FIPS revalidation for, SP4, uh, for SLEE 12 SP4. And um, we will do a both criteria certification for SLE 15 and SB1 as planned of today. And we also do a FIPS uh, 142 um, evaluation on the very same code base um, so that you have in the lucky situation um, at the end to have one code stream uh, which fulfills exactly both requirements. Um, we will update um, the FIPS certifications um, every second service pack. Um, that's necessary because we uh, normally do changes, major changes in the kernel regularly there. And also um, we try to, uh, we will uh, stick to a process called continuous revalidation, uh, which we plan to do for uh, also e uh, every second service pack so that we, and this is new, uh, this is our current state of planning. Uh, we don't have um, experiences with us. Um, so this reflects our ideas on doing so and we have been assured by a couple of partners um, in the consultants at sector that this is possible. Um, I just say it might be that it doesn't work out at the end because we had too much changes in the security area and so the authorities might tend not to revalidate or anything like that could happen. Uh, which we don't know that, so this is the current state of planning. Um, but I would say, personally, with an 80% likelihood, it is hopefully going to work out. Um, so at a glance, uh, we do a lot of work inside the security certifications, <coughs> ensure that our pro uh, products are um, certified at uh, the state of the art. And um, you can uh, go, uh, go out and sell to government and uh, be, uh, yeah, um, ha have a product according to the tenders. Okay, another area is proactive security. So one is a certification, another is a high impact vulnerability, so now it comes to what do we do in order to stay secure? And um, we, we, we have a, a couple of measures going on. So, um, for example, we definitely reflect on our team puts together secure default settings and we're having really hard discussions on what should be in the, uh, in the default settings because security is always a balance between being secure and being able to work. <laughs> and um, also we provide hardening guides. Stick is just one of those. And um, we will, we are currently working on more and more app armor profiles 
because we see at armor as a security uh, feature that is doable uh, for the practical situations and controllable. Um, we're also um, uh, do our to compile our binaries um, with um, yeah specific settings which guarantee um, yeah some uh, uh, some special security um, against potential threats um, that might occur because of faulty or not 100% appropriate code. And one example, for example, is uh, this uh, system down vulnerability, um, where we were not affected because we have taken in advance the right steps um, in, uh, in, in the compile, uh, compilation settings. Um, also, uh, we do security audits um, on packages. Um, alone in 2008, we did it on 50. Um, we do a mandatory whitelisting. And um, what is also very important, we have constant training for our stuff internally. Um, so and now, what do we do to make you the heroes? Um, it's advisories um, on our web pages. Uh, it's CDE pages, it's TIDs. Um, which provide you with, a uh, uh, with, an, with an audit form uh, and a formal form of information which you can rely on. We regularly block on very specific themes to bring you um, our opinion on the situation and just hand over the kind of information we have and try to explain uh, complex situations in the order that business decision makers can rely on uh, their decisions. Um, we provide hardened guys, and um, uh, for the, that's the human part of that. And in machine rebuild format, we provide oval. Um, we provide scap, which is the automized version of stick. And uh, um, we also uh, provide CDRF um, for security advisory automation. Um, you can find these informations um, on um, our webpage, so um, www.zuza.com slash security is your entry point towards our uh, security information and we will constantly work um, on this security page and from there you get links to all other informations. So if you in need of any information, this is your starting point from there on. You can follow links towards the recording uh, and appropriate information. So this is what we do. And I think um, this helps you uh, to really, at the best man known condition, provide security for your company and for your customers. Thank you very much for your attention. Have you got any questions? Do you plan FIPS certification also for the storage product since you use encryption there as well? Yes. Okay. So it's, uh, the storage product uh, will, be bar, uh, will be based on SLE 15. And so uh, we have this modular concept for, uh, concept for SLE 15. And so it, it's based on that. And, and so uh, it, it will be uh, okay. part of that. Do you have white hats in your company? So you manage uh, secure the and life cycle. Do you have white hats in, in SUSE? What? White Sorry. hats. Contrary to black hats. Uh, white hats? Yeah. Um, do we? Yeah, basically, uh, our security team, we are not black hats. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. It's proactive security, what we are doing and uh, working on. Um, what, what, what I can. I can uh, say to that, so, so I was a little bit, you know, this, 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 this is a little critical. I don't know what these guys are doing in the private world. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, and I don't want to know. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's of course, um, uh, the situation that anybody who's taking care of uh, security needs to, uh, to get information and to be um, at a, a current state of the art. But um, 
in addition to that, we are considering um, to take also the help of external uh, companies to challenge us. Uh, but at the current state, I'm not allowed to talk about. When you talk about the different uh, certificates, you did not mention ISO 27001, or did I miss this? Um. Yes. Um, ISO 27001 is a topic we, uh, we're considering. Okay. But in a, an open source company, it's an increased effort mm -hmm. to establish procedures according to that. Mm. Uh, so if we should invest in that, it will take a while mm. to work out the appropriate steps. Um, and this is also necessary to keep security. Why? For example, um, I had a very interesting discussion with one of our consultants who was also part of uh, the ISO group uh, on common criteria. And uh, I was pointing to the fact that if you really stick to the book and just install a certified version of an operating system, you stay insecure. Because by, this, uh, by the date you have been certified, the system is insecure again. Security is a process. So, and uh, common criteria is a freeze point in time. So common criteria itself, itself just proves that your product has been secure and any known measures uh, at a certain point of time in a combination of hardware and software and settings. And this is defined uh, in the paper. And it does only say this configuration has been secure at that point of time. But now time passes on. And a hundred of kernel patches have been created a hundred of other measure, uh, measurements have been taking place, and literally this situation, uh, these, these, if, if you install these upgrades, you're not really complying to this uh, setting yet. We have the flow remediation process, with, uh, which guarantees that the way we provide this information keeps up uh, a secure situation, but if you literally stick to that, um, you will uh, and, and, and just install that version. Um, you will be ins uh, you will be uh, insecure at the time you got the certificate. No, no. For that one, you have patched vulnerability. Yes, yes I, I know. But but if you stick to that and and, and also um, uh, but what we are trying to establish and and constantly working on is um, to somehow go at the very borders of these certifications and to, to provide this state-of-the-art security also. Yeah. And this is sometimes conflicting. And ISO 7020, uh, 7020, uh, what? It's, it's a nice certificate. And for us now, it's a certificate. When, when JPR came along, it was quite some of the measurements of ISO 27001, we could actually then map to what they have to do for the GDPR. So I think it's not based on money, yes. but it might be an interest which you will have to think about. Yeah. We're considering. <laughs> Interesting. Any else questions? So thank you very much for your time and your attendance. <laughs>